Today we're continuing on our NHL offseason plan series and taking a look at the 14th place team from the regular season, the Columbus Blue Jackets. What moves do we expect from that franchise this offseason? We'll discuss all that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now in case you're new to this series, we're doing an updated video for all 31 teams outlining what their plans likely are going to be for the 2020 NHL offseason. We started at the 31st ranked team from the regular season, the Red Wings, and we're working our way all the way up through number one. So today we're at number 14 for the Blue Jackets. So we're going to recap their 1920 season, take a look at what they have for cap space, what contracts are expiring, RFAs, UFAs, what they might be looking at for trades, and kind of make a plan for them on what they're likely going to do this offseason. So let's kick things off, first up by recapping their 1920 season. So as you can see in the screen here, the Blue Jackets were a bit of a surprise this year. I must admit, I certainly had them finishing much lower because of free agency and all the players that left. They finished with a record of 33, 22, and 15 for 81 points. That's a lot of overtime losses. Can you imagine if they could have cut that down uh, and even had that down to like six or seven overtime losses? They could have gained a lot of extra points and been right near the division lead. It could have been a much, a much better playoff spot. So the Blue Jackets, like I said, as we know, lost a lot of players last year. They lost Bobrovsky. They lost Panarin. They lost Duchesne. They lost the Zingle. But they were really well coached by John Tortorella. They stuck to their systems. They got great goaltending. Uh, the other two guys that came in between Corpus Allo and Elvis Merzlikens. And really, like I said, overall, they were a pretty strong team. Now, let's take a look at some of those team results, including their goals for against and special teams. Now, goals for, they scored 180 goals while giving up 187. So 187 actually is really good. It's not bad at all, uh, but they certainly could use some more offensive firepower. So because of all that, uh, players that they lost in free agency, many of them outside of Bobrovsky, were some pretty strong offensive players. So it's not a big wonder why their offensive numbers were down this year, uh, but their defensive structure and goaltending allowed them to win. So with a team like Columbus, you're going to get your one nothings, your 2-1s, your low-scoring affairs, which is kind of the games they need to play in order to really be successful. They start trying to open things up and play more of a run-and-gun style and more of an offensive show. A lot of teams, they just can't keep up. So they should be able to get better offensively, but they're bound to make some of the changes here this offseason. So now let's take a look at their special teams. Their power play wasn't very good, again, because of the lack of offense. They struggled mightily, 16.4%, 27th best in the NHL, while their PK was actually really good in the top 15, 12th best overall, 81.7%. So overall, like I said, defensively and between the pipes, pretty solid. They could certainly use some help scoring, though. So now let's take a look at their cap space as of right now, what they have for expiring contracts, and then discuss what we're going to see from them between trades and signings, etc., to get ready for next year. Now, as you can see, the cap space here from capfriendly.com, they don't have a lot of room, but they also don't have a lot of players to sign. They only have $7 million in cap space, but they have 22 players under contract for next season. Now, of course, not all 22 of those players may return to the lineup, but still, that creates a situation where they don't have a, a lot of players to look after. Uh, so the, the cap space that they have isn't a huge issue. Now, let's take a look at what contracts they do have that are expiring. Now, as you can see from the graphic here, they have nobody who's an unrestricted free agent. Of course, last year, like I said, they had the mass exodus of UFAs. That's not going to happen this year. They have absolutely nobody that falls into that category. They will have some coming up next year. For the RFAs, though, they do have a couple of big ones, and primarily Pierre-Luc Dubois, who showed in the playoffs. He's by far uh, you know, still growing, still developing, and can be that number one center, but they could certainly use some help behind him uh, in that number two spot in the center position. Uh, they got Josh Anderson as well, big, strong, rugged winger. You know, potential 25 goal guy, I think, but uh, certainly spent most of this past year injured. Um, had some contentious negotiations before. He's been in the trade rumor mill. So certainly some question marks around his future. So they're going to decide on him. And they also have Devin Shore and Gabriel Carlson as well. Um, they very well could be offered qualifying offers. Difficult to say, but they don't play a huge role on the team either way. The main concern here is Dubois with Anderson coming in at a you know somewhat distant second as far as priorities go when it comes to their own active players. Now, let's take a look, though. What are the burning questions around this franchise? What other moves are they expected to make when it comes to free agency or trades to shake up this roster and try to take it a step forward for next year? 
Now, as I mentioned, a top priority amongst all of their items. I think it's signing Pierre-Luc Dubois. I think he's shown that he's capable of doing a long-term contract. Uh, I would probably try to lock him up now long-term because he's only going to continue to get better. He's only going to continue to drive up that price tag. So doing a shorter-term deal, longer-term probably would be better for him. But from the team's perspective, if I'm uh, Yermo Kekulain, and I'm probably going to try to lock up Pierre-Luc Dubois to at least a five-year deal, maybe even more. I'd be willing to go six or seven with a guy like Dubois, maybe even eight, depending on what the numbers work out to. Uh, all of those items would be under consideration for him. Uh, I do think long-term he can be their top center and one of their top offensive players. But like I said, they need to find some players to kind of build around him in that top six group. They do have a few other guys that are offensive, like a Cam Atkinson, for example. But again, like that number two center spot, kind of weak. I mean, they have a guy like Alex Wenberg, who's a decent center, but really not putting up the offense. He's really fallen off a lot since he got his long-term contract a few years ago. Uh, so they, they need some more help in that number two pivot spot. Now, not only do they need help for the number two center spot, but they could certainly use another offensive winger to play in the top six as well. Now, how are they going to go about doing that? They only have $7 million in cap space. Well, first up, if you look through the trade market, they're likely going to be trading a goaltender. They have two goalies, one in Jonas Corbosalo and Elvis Merslikens. They both have contracts, uh, not longer term. They've only got one extra year beyond the current season. Uh, Elvis Merslikens signed around $4 million. Corbosalo was around two and a half. million. Uh, so there, obviously there's a bit of a gap there. Corbosalo, though, got majority of the playing time uh, during the playoffs. Now, they both did get some action on. They both played well. Uh, they both had good regular seasons as well. So I think they both would have... Um, certainly some good trade appeal for sure. Now, I think Corpus Allo might have more trade value given the fact that he's a little bit more established at the NHL level and he's also got a cheaper contract. So I think there's going to be a lot of teams calling Columbus, uh, asking about his availability and trying to offer up uh, something that's going to help them another way to make that deal happen. Now, of course, like I mentioned, the future of Josh Anderson is also in question. He could turn out to possibly be that offensive winger that they need in the top six. But I do think that there's some concern on the uh, injury front as well as contract front that could cause them to consider shipping him out and maybe bringing him into another uh try and replace him i mean with another you know offensive top six winger if they can do that now if you look around the nhl what could they go to well there's like i said numerous videos there's going to be a major goaltending carousel with all kinds of goalies going around changing teams um, so there's no shortage of teams looking to upgrade their goaltending. And, of course, there's some teams as well, even like a team like Montreal, for example. They don't need a goalie, but they have guys like Max Domi and Philip Deneau who are rumored to be on a trade block from a center position. So that could help them out. Josh Anderson, I think, would be a good help in Montreal. We've had that discussion on the channel before. So that, that's a possibility there. We could see a, a swap of players in that regard. Uh, as far as goaltending go, like they're, they're, I could rattle off probably 15 or 20 teams who could be interested because we know they're going to be looking to make some change or there's at least some uncertainty with their own goaltenders who might be free agents who they may not be able to retain. Uh, so there's going to be uh, you know a bit of musical chairs going on in that position this year. But it's certainly, like I said, that those are the biggest questions is the number two center spot, a scoring winger, and getting Dubois signed. By far the biggest. And how do they do that? Well, they're going to trade a goalie. Maybe trade Josh Anderson. I don't see Columbus going into free agency to do a whole lot, mainly because there's not going to be a ton of big names out there. And that would be more of a scenario if they needed a couple of, you know, maybe some depth pieces. If they're looking for somebody to play a third pair defense or a fourth line role, something like that might be a consideration if they were to need that. But they really need something on the higher end of the levels here. And I only think they're mainly going to get that by trading uh, players out. So we'll see what happens. But uh, the holes in Columbus are clear and abundant. But they're a team that's on the rise. They have a lot of great young players. They have one of the best uh, defense pairs in the league with Wierenski and Jones. They've still got some other defensemen playing behind them that are pretty solid as well. Uh, we've got some pretty, you know, we have good goaltending in Columbus. You have, you know, a good group of forwards to start building around. But they need more offense. It's just that simple. Now, they can also look this offseason at uh, some contract extensions as well to determine the future of some other players, including Captain Nick Foligno, who will be entering the final year of his contract when next season gets underway. So they have to determine his future. Uh, they maybe take a look at that. They could get ahead of it, maybe. I don't know what, uh, what the prognosis is for what kind of contract he's looking for. Um, so we'll see, but that's another thing we could see out of Columbus 
this offseason here as well. So let me know what moves you expect the Blue Jackets to make down in the comments and we can discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.